Welcome to day one, lesson one, for change in tandem in AP Precalculus. The rule of four concept will be used throughout our course. It helps us to identify key information from a single representation of a function. With your graphing calculator, let's start with this function here. We want to use that function in your calculator to complete this table of values to represent a function at a point, to do some algebra, and to answer a verbal question. This is the rule of four. Beginning in the numerical column, the t of zero is 28, the t of six is 70 and 72 hundredths, and the t of 12 is 86 and 8 hundredths. Graphically, we can go to t equals 6 and see that represented when t is 6, the y value is 70.72. In the algebraic column, if the input value is 12 and a half, what is the output value? Representing that we want to evaluate t of 12 and a half and find that the answer using our calculator is 86.125. And then finally, verbally, the temperature for a city in Colorado is modeled by the function t, where lowercase t represents the hours of the day and t of t represents the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit. Our task is to use the model to find the predicted temperature at 6 p.m. We know 6 p.m. can be represented as time at 18 hours. So the temperature at 18 hours, which is 6 p.m., using your calculator, is about 74.08 degrees Fahrenheit. This is how the rule of four will be presented throughout our course. Students should be comfortable being given any one of the four methods to represent a function and able to convert it to any of the other three of the representations. In our first example, we want to look at some of the function vocabulary. For example, if a function is defined as positive, then we know that the graph of the function lies above the x-axis. So in example one, if we're looking at the graph g of x over here to the right, and you want to state the interval or intervals where g is positive, we want to look for where the function lies above the x-axis. So it looks like from negative four over to zero, and then again, beginning at five, and then over to nine. So our function is positive on the interval from negative four to zero, and also from five to nine. You can write set notation or interval notation. In part B, we're looking for where the interval of the function g is negative, and our definition says a function is defined as negative when the graph of f lies below the x-axis. Give that a try on your own now. How did you do? Negative infinity to negative 4, 0 to 5, and 9 to infinity. Finally, we want to state the zeros of the function, and the zeros of the function are where the graph of the function crosses the x-axis. So we have a zero at negative four, zero, a zero at the origin, zero, zero, a zero at five, and a zero at nine. And we're going to record those as an ordered pair. You might also want to state that in set builder notation, the set of all x such that x is negative 4, 0, 5, or 9. That would be acceptable as well. 
In this next example, the definition of increase, decrease, and constant behavior has been modified a little bit compared to your notes. We say that F is increasing over an interval of its domain. If the input values increase, then the output values always increase. A function is decreasing on an interval. If the input values increase, the output values decrease. And finally, a function is constant on an interval. If the input values increase, the output values show no change. It's important to know that we read a graph in mathematics from left to right the same way we, we read a book. Let's practice that in example two. In this example, you need a green pencil, a red pencil, and a yellow pencil. So take a look at the graph, and using your green pencil, you want to shade the interval where the graph is increasing. It appears that we're increasing in this area here. So using our green pencil or marker, I'm increasing from zero to two. We're increasing on zero to two. You can clarify with your teacher whether they want the inclusive on the endpoints or if they want the open interval only depends on your teacher's preference. The function is decreasing. We're going to use a red pencil to identify those areas. So switching over to our marker, I am decreasing from negative infinity to the minimum point, and then we're decreasing from 5 to infinity. So we're decreasing from negative infinity, which is never a bracket, up to zero. And we're decreasing from five to infinity. So if your teacher prefers the closed notation at the end point, we could be closed at five and open at infinity. And for part C, the function is constant using our yellow marker. The function is constant between 2 and 5, making that notation. We are constant between either closed interval at 2, closed interval at 5, or 2 to 5 with open endpoints. In example 3, we're going to look at what makes a function. You know from Algebra 1 that we say a function is a mathematical relation that maps a set of input values to a set of output values so that each input value is mapped to exactly one output. In algebra, you learn to use the vertical line test. But in AP Precalc, we will not be able to justify a relation as a function by using that language. We're going to have new language in this course. Specifically that each input has one and only one output. For example three, we want to find the domain and the range in each of the relations that are shown below. You might want to turn off the video and give this example A a try on your own and then join us back to see if your answers match our answers. In part A, the domain is going to be all the input values. We can write those in set notation, 7, negative 3, 1, 3, and 2. The range would be all the output values or the y values. That would be negative 2, 5, 6, negative 4, and we don't need to list 5 again. Is the relation a function? Yes, we can say the relation is a function. 
And we can justify that statement by saying each input maps to a unique output value. We can also state the same as in our notes here highlighted, that each input value has one and only one output value. In part B, you might want to attempt that on your own as well. You can see that our domain is all the X values. I believe something happened to our image here. This should be labeled X and this should be labeled Y. So the domain would be all the X coordinates, negative six, negative three, two, and three. The range would be all the Y coordinates or the output values, negative one, negative four, negative two, and zero. Is the relation a function? And if you look at it carefully, you can see two maps to zero and two maps to negative two. So our relation is only a relation. It is not a function based on our definition of a function. You can see in our notes here, if a relation is not a function, we can say the reason why is not every input has one and only one output value. I could also say something like this. We have a relation only because when our input value is two, our output values map to zero or negative two. It is not a unique output value for the relation. Then in our last example, we need to be careful with what we say. Stating that a function is positive is different than saying that the function is increasing or that the rate of change of a function is positive. In example four, we want to sketch a graph that could represent this statement. The graph of G is negative and increasing. And what we saw at the beginning, when a graph is negative, that means it is below the x-axis. And increasing means that it is going up as we move from left to right. So sketch a graph and then compare your graph to my graph. In my example, you can see that I'm below the x-axis. So the graph of G is negative. All the y values are negative. And the graph is increasing along that interval. And then for the last example, we want to draw the graph of H. The graph of H is positive and decreasing. And for the function to be positive, that means our graph has to lie above the x-axis and decreasing. So the y values are going down as the x values increase. Or as the input increases, the output decreases. So this is our example for y equals h of x. That's the end of day one.